the two places that came to my mind, uh, one is the Jewish Community Center, that was, <laughs> and the other is the um, building that's known as the Chesed Shel Emet, so it's the building that belongs to the, the Hever Kedisha, and those are two significant places because of my connection to Temple Beth Ora. So I joined Temple Beth Ora a week after I moved to Edmonton because my uh, cousin's son needed um, the, a breach and, uh, um, and uh, I was living in their dining room at the time and uh, they had to join the temple in order to access the that so, uh, resource of the synagogue. And so I decided to join as well. So, so that was in 1987. And, uh, and for me, the uh, Temple Beth Ora was, uh, my Jewish experience really is in Edmonton is intertwined with Temple Beth Ora. And uh, Temple Beth Ora was intertwined with uh, the Jewish Community Center because that's where it was situated. That I initially got involved as uh, in communications and coordinated communications committee, and then um, then I got drawn in to being on the board. And I always say I was like on the board for most of my adult life. So I, I uh, started off as uh, I moved into the uh, role of VP administration and then VP ritual and then became president of the synagogue. So I, I got deeper and deeper into it. And uh, um, so, yeah, I spent a lot of my volunteer time in Edmonton. <laughs> a lot of my volunteer time in Edmonton was being involved with the, with the synagogue and uh, um, and the, the space that we used, the Jewish Community Center, was uh, very much a part of the identity of the, of the synagogue and, and all the stories and associations in those first few years were with that, that space that we, where we were a tenant, a tenant in that building. Um, so yeah, so lots of different things that went on, went on there. Um, but that space was a, a, a shared space, as you know, and um, so the bill, the room that was, <coughs> excuse me, the room that was our sanctuary during the week, it was sometimes used for Feldenkrais uh, movement therapy classes, and I don't know what else went on there. And then, you know, on Friday night, it was transformed into a sacred space for our our congregation, it became our sanctuary. So um, the same room, you know, could take on a very different significance uh, uh, for the people who were making use of it. Uh, but there was a lot of uncertainty about what would happen with that site <clears throat> for years and years. Uh, so we always knew that, that there was a possibility that we might have to relocate uh, but I think that Temple Beth Ora was in that building for 25, 25 years. So it was a long, a long association, um, association with that building. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we might have to relocate, um, we, uh, Marshall Hundert, who is a developer and very knowledgeable about land and space opportunities, he, he landed on one option, um, which was, I, th I was thinking about it as kind of a confluence of opportunities. So he knew that the apartment that is on the second floor of the Chesed Shel Emet, the, the, where the, the Hever Kedisha has their building for funerals, um, uh, he knew that that second floor apartment was being rented out and uh, to tenants in the community. And that apartment is where um, Les and Mary, the couple that um, manages the cemetery and that building, they actually lived in that apartment and raised their three children <laughs> in that little apartment. And um, he came up with an idea. Uh, the, the other important piece is that uh, 
at the cemetery, uh, the community had renovated the little chapel. So almost all the funerals were being held at the cemetery chapel, uh, in the chapel at the cemetery. And uh, so the sanctuary was only being used a handful of times during the year on average. It was really being used for, it, I think of it as the, the makers of the community, like not necessarily major figures in the, in the Jewish community, but people who uh, where the family thought this is going to attract a lot of people. And I have some very specific memories of, of huge funerals in that, in that building. Um, so he, he knew that that apartment was being rented out, that the sanctuary wasn't being used very often. And he, he pictured that um, that space upstairs could be transformed into being our offices and space for our school, uh, the Beit Safer, the Sunday school and, uh, and meetings. So the living room he imagined could be for the rabbi's office and the administrative person, the bedrooms could become the, the classrooms and meeting space and then the kitchen could be renovated. Um, and then he also had the idea that we could take out the back pew, pew, the rows, the pews of the wooden, beautiful wooden pews and put them into storage. And then we would have a social hall at the back of the, the building, <clears throat> at the back of the sanctuary. So that, um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, for myself and for a number of people, the idea of using that space as uh, the sanctuary in particular um, was hard to get our heads around because it was a place that had only the saddest of memories. Um, the biggest funerals I was at there were one was for Alan Stein, uh, who did a CBC broadcaster and had other roles. Another one was for Earl Klein, who died at 33 and I was very good friends with his former wife. He had young kids and he had had a brain aneurysm when he was um, on a tour as an actor. So those, the sanctuary was full of people who were sad. And so it was a place that only had uh, memories of sadness and mourning and loss. And just the notion that we would use this space for other purposes was really hard to, to um, to picture, um, but the one of the thoughts that helped me was thinking about smaller Jewish communities that don't have separate buildings for funerals and, and for congregations. It's all in one space and all those life cycle events take place in the same space. So I think it was like starting to, to put a crack in that shield of of protection of thinking that we couldn't possibly use this space for that purpose. So um, that decision was made that we would, we would make the move there. And um, so Marshall um, almost single-handedly did the renovations uh, <clears throat> upstairs and he negotiated the terms of the lease. So the move from the Jewish Community Center to the building downtown um, on a particular day, we actually, we did different things to make that an important, an important move. So on a particular day, we uh, had a plan to walk the Torah scrolls from the Jewish Community Center to the Chesed Shel Emet. And so we had arranged for people to handle um, uh, legs, <laughs> uh, segments of that walk from the West End to downtown. I think Felix Friedman was the, was the president at the time. I think he walked the whole distance. And, uh, and so we had our, our last service at the Jewish Community Center walk the Torah scrolls and then had our first service at the, the Chesed Shel Emmet downtown. So that was how we marked 
that occasion. And then we actually have since then had a couple of other um, occasions. So we had a, an event that was, uh, we call the Hanukkah, Hanukkah Bai, the dedication of our new home. So we invited the whole community for that. And then um, later on, we had a, um, a rededication of the stained glass windows that Vivian Manask and her father had designed and, and created. And, uh, and we had a special event to rededicate those stained glass windows, which now sit at the back of the sanctuary. So, so those are some ways in which we uh, marked that that transition to give it to give it meaning. The first um, sort of transformative moment I had was seeing uh, Sarah and David Feldman's professional wedding photos, and theirs was the first wedding that took place in that building um, that was uh, uh, led by Rabbi uh, Karmit Harari. And it was really an odd feeling because it was with this oxymoron of these beautiful photos and this happy occasion happening in that, in that space. And, uh, and their photos were just beautiful. And it, it just, it like put a different light on that, on that building. And then came a baby naming, and the first baby naming and the first bar of bat mitzvah. And gradually, I felt like we had a chance to lay down new memories for that space. And I, I think we, we started to fill it with music. I was part of Chavra Tashir, the group that was leading music and laughter and sadness and holiday celebrations. And um, other people in the broader Jewish community came and they started to have different experiences. So vicariously, we start to take the, the feelings that they, that they were conveying. And I think um, it was, I think that laying down of new memories was a really significant part of embracing that space. Um, and the other thing I just want to mention is I think that Temple Bethara for 25 years was a tenant in a recreation center. And then we became a tenant in one of the most central, with, associated with one of the most central institutions in the Jewish community of the Hebrew Kedisha, a place that so many people have some connection to. And, and we were in the center of the city. And for me having never lived in the West End, um, that it felt like we were now sort of, in some ways were um, legitimized as being now part of connected, associated with a major institution. And um, uh, so that, that felt different. It felt different. I mean, my own feeling about being a member of the temple didn't change, but, but I felt like, uh, our, our place physically and kind of psychologically in, in the community had shifted by, by virtue of that, of that move. Um, so we traded off a, a, a beautiful view out of those panoramic windows of the river valley. So each time it was very contemplative view outside outside our sanctuary at the JCC. And we traded that off for a, a beautiful sanctuary um, uh, in, the, in the building downtown. And for quite a while, we kept calling it the Chesed Shell Emmet. And at a certain point, someone said, we don't have to call it that. That is our synagogue. We put our sign on the outside. And for us, that is Temple Beth Ora. So it was interesting to sort of see that transformation of feeling like this is our, our place. Now it is a shared place um, for sure, but it is our synagogue. Hello, Delhi. <laughs> That's one that, that, uh, that is, that is, I, I do miss as uh, we, I, I, I miss the fact that there aren't really places where people come and sit down and enjoy, enjoy Jewish food together. Um, we really don't have that kind of place anymore. Um, because I didn't live in the West End, um, bakeries and things like that, I didn't have that much of a role in my 
in my experience. So, um, but uh, but Hello Delhi really <laughs> stood out as just a just a place where it felt good. And having lived in Toronto for a number of years, maybe it gave me a little feeling of of sort of that association of places you would go and uh, um, feel that connection because of food. Um, 